Hi, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you Juice Plus for having me. I'm super excited to spend the next 25 minutes with you guys. I have so much to share. Man, uh, the last few months I've been studying so much in the health and wellness space and mindset and, and, um, and so anyways, let's, uh, let's get going. First, my name is Jason Fowler. I live in Boston. I'm a mindset coach to youth athletes. Uh, what that means is uh, I help middle school through college athletes get the best from themselves, not only in sports and athletics, but in life in general, give them life skills that they take on and use hopefully forever. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. A little bit more about my story. Um, let's see, going, going right back to the beginning. Uh, growing up, my dad bought me a motorcycle when I was six years old. I raced 40 weekends a year. Uh, fast forward 11 years, I won eight New England uh, motocross championships. And then uh, I was out practicing one day and uh, didn't see a rock in some grass. My bike hit the, the rock. It sent me flying and I came, uh, landed straight down on my head. It compressed my spine at about T5 and severed my spinal cord. What that means is it paralyzed me from just below the chest down. And um, wow, to say the least, it shook my world, uh, being a 17 year old and basically learning how to live or forced to learn how to live without my legs. And um, luckily it wasn't worse. Uh, luckily and gratefully, I had really close friends and family there to support me. And uh, subsequently now, uh, fast forward almost 30 years, so a long time uh, using a wheelchair, uh, I've completed over 150 road races, over 40 marathons now, uh, 45 triathlons, including six Ironman World Championships and two Ironman World Championship wins. Um, if you're not familiar with an Ironman, it's 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a 26.2 mile marathon, uh, which takes me about 11 hours to complete. And um, so it's really the biggest goal I could put in front of myself. Now I realize most of you guys aren't Iron Man or I'm an Iron Women. Um, although you have your own Iron Man and Iron Women days, weeks, months, years, taking care of your kids, um, doing your jobs, whatever it is, you have your own Iron Man. I know we're all, all stressed, we're all stretched, uh, which brings up, wow, what is happening in the world right now, right? things are going a little bit crazy. So um, you're not alone. Uh, a lot of my friends that I've spoke, spoken with and, and obviously just uh, hearing on social media, it seems like everybody's being stretched. Everybody's being stressed in new ways. And all these sort of imbalances are really just coming to head. And um, more and more reason to study mindset, health and wellness, take care of our bodies, take care of our minds and be our best and really just try to roll with these tough times. And um, so my goal for today is, is hopefully to share some of the principles and strategies I've learned to kind of deal with the resiliency, the resiliency that I went through with my accent, the resiliency that I had to, to sort of build that mental muscle as an athlete. Uh, I had years and years and of, of fail, I, what I would call failing at the time. I don't call them failures now, I, they're really, um, cliche way of saying it, but there really were lessons and they really um, taught me and, and molded me and created who I am now, which um, again, I'll say this sort of uh, have de developed this mindset and really sort of built this muscle around my mindset. And that for me now is a, is a program that I run. So it's, it's a process that I can run regardless of what it is, whether it's sports and athletics, it's just a way in which I approach things. And, and I'm hoping to share a little bit of that with you uh, I'm also going to be sharing uh, my goal setting, goal setting strategy, which I'm super excited about because it's a goal setting strategy that, well, basically it doesn't allow you to lose, which I love. Um, a goal that you set and it's big and audacious and, and you never lose. Sounds good, right? Sounds too good to be good to be true. Uh, it's not, I promise. Um, but first, I want to share some of the things that I've re-remembered and learned through this crazy time the last few months. The first is, man, I got to be more grateful. 
and I have to remember this. And I, I know that there's this has been kind of a buzzword in the last few years, and everybody has gratitude journals. And and I think a lot of the people are missing the true meaning behind it. It is not just to feel good, but really, it is the essence of our purpose. It's the essence of our why, and it should be fueling everything that we do. And when you are come from this place of gratitude, and you come from this place of grateful, you just approach things entirely different. You approach things with a different energy, a different attitude that um, people can tell. And it also creates momentum. When you're grateful and you're gratitude and you're positive and you wake up in the morning and you're feeling amazing, that momentum carries throughout the day. It carries throughout. Next thing you know, a, a day turns into a week. A week turns into a month. A month turns into a year. And all of a sudden, you're accomplishing amazing things. Have you ever heard that where people just all of a sudden good things start happening and they start happening and happening? It's because of that momentum. It's because of the energy behind it. And I, and I know, and I've, I've experienced this myself, and I know others have too, when you're really grateful, amazing things start happening. And the opposite is also true, right? When you're not doing well, when you're physically not well, or you have just a bad attitude, or you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, whatever it is, that then can, can perpetuate itself. And I know a lot of people have felt that the last few months, and, and you're not alone. I've had that time where you're like, oh man, I'm going to be in the house again, or like I have to do this, or... I'm not going back to school or I'm not going back to work or how am I going to take care of the kids? How am I going to make ends meet? Um, so I know that is also tough to get out of. And I'm here to say you're not alone in that, but there definitely are some things we can do uh, to get past that and be better. And I experienced that after my accident, especially, you know, it's been a long time now, but I remember like it was yesterday uh, where how do I just learn to put my shoes on? Like, how do I learn to get dressed? How do I learn to go to the bathroom? All those things um, that you wouldn't think about as a 17 year old, and all of a sudden I was challenged with. And, um, and really it was, it was just trying to stay positive and keeping the right mindset of like, okay, this is a lesson. Like I got a, just another challenge. I got to just keep, keep, keep pushing forward. And eventually uh, things got easier and I got better. And that momentum carried itself. And, um, and I started doing athletics and I started doing road races and, and, it, and it made me feel better. The second thing that came up or that I really learned and was reminded of was, man, our thoughts are powerful. So what I found was, and it goes along that same lines of momentum. And, and I know you see this, we see this all the time in sports and athletics and athletes, when you have confidence about who you are, what you're doing, uh, our thoughts and the quality of our thoughts. So if, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I've done this several times now where you try to, you basically have a journal and you write in it a couple times a day. So every couple hours you write down of, of that period of time, what percent of the time did you have positive thoughts versus negative thoughts? And so if you track, you know, your day, just a normal day for you and you think about what percent of the time you're having positive thoughts for empowering thoughts, or not just empowering thoughts, but say inspiring thoughts. Can you imagine if you increase that number with whatever it is now, with more inspiring thoughts, more empowering thoughts that forced you almost, um, uh, inspired you in such a way that it moved you to take action over and over. If you increase it, say 5% or 10%, how amazing, how many more amazing things would come through your life. So anyways, think about that and think about, what hap what's happening in your life and how you can make it better by just thought alone. And again, opposite, same to the, the other component that I was talking about, the negative thoughts could happen as well. What, what portion of those are negative? What portion of those thoughts are, are fear? And again, it's almost impossible to, I think, eliminate them entirely and know that it's natural. But when you then recognize that you're having these thoughts of also of fear and scared and lack and limitation, if that's your constant thought process, then that is really what you're going to bring in your life. And so I've, I really found that to be that, that sort of uh, process of manifestation uh, to work both positively and negatively, depending upon where you are. So that's something that I would definitely look upon and that it, uh, I've learned in the last few months or remembered in the last few months that have really helped me get through these tough times. Uh, the last is, what are you consuming? And not just from a food perspective, which we are going to get into food and nutrition, and that's one of my real passions as well. But I found that when I was consuming negative information, that I had negative thoughts. When I was consuming inspiring information, meaning uh, for me, what I love doing that's inspiring 
is getting online and then watching, listening to podcasts, uh, reading blogs, uh, all sorts of things that would inspire me. Get on YouTube and people that inspire me and, and challenge me to think differently. So what are you consuming on a daily basis that's, that is inspiring you, that's challenging you to do additional things in your life to be better? So those are just some of the things that, that, I, that stood out for me over the last few months that kind of helped me get through these challenging periods of time. Uh, the other thing that I go to as a go-to when there's any challenge in my life is I, I set a goal um, or just even in general, a goal setting, it really gives me purpose and gives me direction in my life and gives me focus as to, to where I want. And I don't always like to have big audacious goals in front of me just because sometimes it's good to just be able to go with the flow and do other things that aren't so uh, poignant. But um, uh, during this time, uh, the way in which I goal set, I wanted to share. And this is the no lose goal strategy. And so first, most people have uh, physical goals that, so for instance, my goal was to finish Ironman. And then my goal was to win Ironman. Now, instead of just having that, and I, again, I wanna preface this as I learned this the hard way. Uh, and, and I'll share that first. I went through the Ironman process and it took me eight years to win. And I finally won the world championships after eight years of trying. I got done with the race and yeah, it felt good, but it didn't feel amazing. It didn't feel like, oh, this is it. And I feel so amazingly fulfilled. And that was because I put my head down and I did everything I could to win. And I forgot about how I was supposed to feel. How was I gonna feel? I didn't make it a goal to feel good. I made it a goal to win. And so I didn't feel amazing during the process. I mean, yes, working out, I felt physically good. And, but mentally, I was putting everything else on hold in my life. And it, it wasn't as fulfilling as it could have been if my goal was to feel good. And so now, every time I set a goal, I set a feeling goal. And now this is the goal that you, you, you can't lose. You can't not complete. And the reason for that is you're setting it. You have in complete 100% control of how you feel. We all are 100% in control of how we feel in our emotions. And so for me, I've built this muscle up. And again, this isn't easy to do, but if you can figure it out for yourself, uh, you'll find that it works amazing. So for me, uh, my feeling goal most of the time is just, how do I feel good in the process? And that could mean a lot of different things, but it's just, how do I feel good? And so it's always just, that's the focus. And when the focus is always feeling good, what happens is the, the actual tangible goal or the physical goal that you're going after, you sort of surrender to that. You say like, I do everything I can to accomplish it, but if I don't do that, really my focus and my intent is to feel good. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens there because you know what? It may have been outside of your control. And if you can't control it, why should you get upset about it, right? And um, it took me a long time to figure that out. And I really feel like this is a new paradigm shift for a lot of athletes. And we're seeing it now. We're seeing it a lot with coaches and we're seeing a lot with athletes that um, it's more the mindset component of it. And they're focused on that part of, of that. So, so anyways, give that a try. Let me know how it works. Um, as I said, it's not easy. But again, when you set a tangible goal, set another feeling goal along with it. And, uh, and you can't lose. Uh, let's see. The next part of it is I wanted to share what my goals were over the last couple months and how they kind of changed with everything that's been happening in our world. First, I set a goal to be uh, more mentally strong and more mentally fit. And that was just because I, I was watching the news and I felt like I was on a roller coaster just being tugged around by a string. And um, basically what I do to do that is, as I mentioned before, I get on podcasts. I listen to Michael Gervais's uh, Finding Mastery podcast. He, dissects how people think and how you get the best from yourself. I get on Rich Roll's podcast where he talks about um, food and nutrition and spirituality and the environment and how we just are better humans, which is just super awesome. And then I get on YouTube and I'm listening to entrepreneur uh, clips and videos from Sunny uh, L and, and her channel. And then I listen to Abraham Hicks when I mention the, the spiritual part or breathing and meditation with Joe Dispenza. So I do things that are inspire me, things that challenge me to be my best and to get out there and do different things with myself. And, um, and again, not just challenge me, but challenge me in a big way so that I get outside my comfort zone 
and, um, and do things that light me up inside. Um, the next part of, in addition to the emotional or the, the mental part of it, the last few months, my goal was, was physically to, to get stronger. And what I mean by that is this time has been an amazing opportunity to reframe it in the sense of, I want my body to be stronger. So meaning it can handle more training. It can handle more stress. It can handle more running around. And specifically what I mean by that is, is just more strength and strong. So I, I do a lot of miles. I do a lot of yards in the pool. And, um, and so it's it just been a great opportunity to sort of step back and take care of my body in a way that I wouldn't have done before and not have to worry so much on, am I getting faster right now? It's just like doing all those things that are slower, like meditation and breathing and the things that are sort of systematic to who we are that sort of run a program. And um, so I've been focused on that. And a lot of people have been doing that right online with online classes, with yoga, uh, lifting, whatever it is, and just being creative with that. And the third part of, of my goal, of the physical part at least is, is the nutrition part. And, and the way I think about nutrition in general is I think about it for the short term and long term. I think about in the short term, I think about the energy, the energy to get through the day, to be able to wake up with energy, uh, to be able to make it through the end of the day and get to six or seven o'clock and be able to do another workout. Um, as a triathlete, uh, I'm working out between 15 and 20 hours a week in season and sometimes more. And so all these, there's a lot to that, right? And a lot to the recovery part of it. And again, it, it, you don't have to be a triathlete. You don't have to be doing Ironmans. You don't have to be doing marathons to know that your body's stressed. You're pushing your body to the edge, whether you're a housewife, whether you're um, a teenager, we're all pushing our bodies and we have to fuel it properly. And so for me, the goal has been, how do I get more nutrition? How do I get it better? And, um, and so I've kind of re gone back and sort of um, re looked at what am I eating? Like, what are the recipes I'm making? And um, I just got done with almost two weeks of just only raw food, which if you've ever tried that is amazing and not easy to do, but amazing. Now, uh, on a regular basis, I eat plant-based. So I eat just all fruits, vegetables, uh, legumes, grains, and, um, and I get everything I, I need from that, except for there's just no way for me to get all the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, phytonutrients that I, without taking a supplement. Uh, so I was introduced to where Juice Plus comes in, which I was introduced to Juice Plus about 13 years ago now by David and Heidi Phillips. Um, at the time they were living in Atlanta and they were my swim coach and David is an athlete and Ironman as well. And, um, he brought up the importance of oxidative stress and I'm like, oxidative stress, what's that mean? As you work out more, you basically stressing your cells and you have oxidation and inflammation and antioxidants are the things that combat that. So fruits and vegetables. And if you're not getting your 15 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, which even as a veggie, I'm getting maybe eight to 10 if I'm lucky. And I eat a lot of salads, I eat a lot of greens. I eat, a, you know, not always, I should say, hardly ever am, am I eating the rainbow um, of colors, which you're supposed to be getting. And, um, and so he's like, well, Juice Plus is it. So basically what, if you don't know what Juice Plus is, uh, it, it's 30 fruits, and dress, 30 fruits and vegetables and berries in a capsule. So basically, um, and this is what's really special is, the organization Juice Plus hand chooses and picks these growers from around the country um, to grow their fruits and vegetables. And what's also super cool is it's, it's third party verified. And what that means by this organization called NSF, if you know anything about that, it's basically the certifications all the Olympians and elite athletes use. And I put housewives and everybody else is stressing their bodies in the same categories as, as Olympians, meaning we all need the same nutrition. We need to be treating ourselves to that and, and decreasing that inflammation with antioxidants. And the only way you get that is through fruits and vegetables. And so even though I eat maybe eight to 10 servings, if I'm lucky in a day, on a really good day in my salad, um, uh, the only other way to get that would be, or the best way that I know is via Juice Plus. So literally I'm getting, when I put in my salad, I'm getting 30 fruits and vegetables every single day in addition to the foods that I'm already eating to supplement and to make sure that I'm getting everything I need. So the phytonutrients and nutrients. What I love about Juice Plus is it literally is a food. So when you take Juice Plus, it's like eating a salad with 30 fruits and vegetables every day. 
uh, when you take it, you will feel the same as what, as if you ate a salad, you're not going to feel this boost of energy. Um, if you didn't eat salads every day, how would you feel? Or if you weren't eating everything you had, how would you feel? Well, it's the same with juice plus. If you're not happy, you're not taking it, you're putting yourself at risk. If you're not getting fruits and vegetables, you're putting yourself at risk for, um, more inflammation and not getting those things. And for me, one of the most important parts as an athlete is recovery. So that's another reason that I take it is the recovery. If I'm not getting everything I need, I'm not getting the proper nutrition for muscle building. And all of a sudden I have, I'm, I'm having to string days together. So first of all, I train six to seven days a week. So if the next day after a hard workout, I'm not able to work out as hard. And the next day after that, I'm not able to work out as hard. And the next day after that, I'm not able to work out as hard. Then I'm getting only a fraction of the benefit that I could be getting from my training if I was properly recovered. And of course, there's other things that go involved with that, right? Getting proper hydration, getting the right sleep, all those little things that you do. Um, you may not feel a boost of energy from Juice Plus, but if you don't take it, just like I do, if I don't take it, I definitely notice a difference. The other thing that I noticed with Juice Plus, which I love this, is that, first of all, I hardly get sick on it. And if I do get sick, in the, especially in the winter, it's usually a couple of times I get the flu or some version of that. Uh, it only lasts a couple of days, so it lasts a fraction of the time as it normally would be. So uh, not only am I sick less, it pays for itself in that alone. The cost of it is so small versus the benefit you're getting. Uh, it's huge. And for me, uh, having been a paraplegic, I've had other health issues that have gone along with being in a wheelchair. And so I'm constantly getting infections and all these other things. And so this is giving me the best chance for my immune system uh, to be my best and, um, and because I've gone through so many health issues and it, if any of you out there have had people yourself or you've had loved ones that are, have been sick, you know how important your health is. If you haven't, it's just a matter of time because everybody that doesn't take care of their body at some point it breaks down. And so I say that not to, to push you, but to say, Hey, listen, you have to take care of your body. And for me, I've always realized now, uh, after studying it for so long, it really comes back down to your mindset. It's like, we all know that we should be eating good. We all know that we should be eat, not eating potato chips. We not, when we go to the grocery store and there's 40 candy bars in front of us at, on, that, on that shelf, like, what are you gonna do? And just know that, knowing that we have a choice to not eat that stuff and eat all the good stuff that can taste just as good as all the other junk food that you eat. Um, it's just a matter of, of being able to knowing how to prepare it. And that starts with studying it, studying how do you prepare plant-based food or just food that fruits and vegetables that taste good and studying that and knowing how that is. And, um, and just knowing that your health is more important than these other things. Anyways, I'm off my soapbox on that, but, but um, anyways, the, if you're not taking juice plus, it's something you should be taking. And if you're not, you should be taking a whole food uh, supplement. So, um, other products that I take by, from Juice Plus is Complete, which uh, if anybody likes smoothies that taste like a candy bar, in my opinion, they taste like a candy bar because it tastes a little bit sweet, chocolatey, and there's so many amazing recipes. I put bananas, strawberries, blueberries, almond milks, any kind of nut milks in there, Thai coconuts. Um, they're so good. So I highly recommend and challenge you guys to check those out. Um, and last... I want to just give you a little pep talk. Everybody needs a pep talk every once in a while. I've been working on my pep talk, although I haven't been practicing this much. So, but uh, let me know how this goes. Uh, and the reason that I say this is we've all just been stressed and challenged so much that we just need a little pep talk. So in the spirit of pep talks, here we go. All right. Just imagine two months, three months from now, you, well, first of all, you set a goal today that's big and audacious and three months from now, all of a sudden you accomplish that goal. What would be holding you back from, from that? What is it that's holding you back? When you reach down inside, is it the fear? Is it that you're scared? Is it that you don't have enough money? Is it you don't think you're smart enough? You don't, what is it? What is it that's holding you back? I want you to really analyze that deep down. What is it that's holding you back? I'm here to say, you know, there's been a lot of things that have come up in my life. So I've put a lot of challenges in front of myself. It was, uh, how do I live without my legs? How do I 
finished my first road race in this wheelchair that scares the bejesus out of me the first time I got in it. And I was horrible at it. How do I, how do I then do a marathon and do 26 miles? I, after finished my first road race in six miles, and I thought I was going to die after six miles, and the, the winner of the race came back three miles to meet me, um, that's how slow I was. How am I going to do a marathon from that? And somehow, you know what it was? It's just thinking positively and not only thinking positively, but putting the work behind it and making a plan and sticking to it and respecting myself and respecting my thoughts that I was, I was good enough and that I was smart enough and that I was going to do the work. And, and I'm here to say that when you do amazing things and you set your goals properly and you challenge yourself big, big things come from big challenges. And when you set your goals and the feeling goal, the goal of feeling good, good things happen from there. So I challenge you guys to dream big, work hard, eat good food, take your juice plus, and please stay safe during these times and stay in touch. I really love connecting with everybody on social media. And um, yeah, if I can be of any help in anybody's journey, please reach out. And again, thank you so much for joining tonight. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have too. I hope you've learned some stuff. And uh, I look forward to uh, speaking with you in the future. Have a great night. Bye now.